of all the kings of the ancient world, the most noble, as I have heard it, was King Arthur. And so, because it's Christmas, I am going to tell you a wonderful adventure of Arthur and his court. Everyone knows the stories of Arthur, of how he was guided by wizards to become our one true king, of how he gathered around him the truest hearted knights in the kingdom for his round table. This is a story of monsters and knights, of the turning of time, of a clever woman and of a deadly quest. So if you will listen to me for just a little while, I will tell it to you exactly as it was once told to me because this is a story that has been told and retold many times over the centuries. It begins at Camelot, the court of King Arthur. Look around you and you can see all of his knights, tall and slender and strong, bowing like young birches to gorgeous ladies with their hair in ravels of gold and silver down their backs. Everyone is dressed like a king or a queen. Silks, velvets, up to their chins in jewels and furs. And before them, every kind of food you could imagine. Boar, geese, venison, castles made entirely out of sugar, soups and stews. And best of all, it's Christmas. A time of feasting, celebration, and games. At the end of the high table will sit Queen Guinevere, quite the most gorgeous woman ever to walk the earth. Look at her, smiling graciously, admired by all the ladies, hello, desired by all the knights. <laughs> Not that she would give anything away, of course, or perhaps we should ask Lancelot about that. At the end of the table will stand King Arthur, a rage of energy. This is what they say he was like in his youth. He could not rest. Every day he insisted on seeing some new challenge of the virtue and strength of his knights. Until then, he would not eat. And so it begins. The door to the hall is flung open. A gust of winter chill slices through the warm-hearted assembly. A man rides in on a tall horse. If he is a man. He is taller by a foot than the tallest warrior in Camelot. Oh, muscle. His hair hangs loose around his shoulders, but it is trimmed to match his beard. He carries a holly branch, and in one hand, a ferocious axe. But most strange of all, he is anchor green. Green from his head to his toes, from his hair to his horse to his skin except for his eyes, and those are the very red of the devil. Silence fills the hall. Until the horse and rider are stood in front of the high table, Guinevere and Arthur. Arthur, to his credit, does not flinch. He begins by playing the host. Sir, you are most welcome. I am Arthur, King of the Britons. Sit, and I will see to it that anything you wish is brought to you. I haven't come to socialize. A nervous muttering fills the hall. Arthur tries a different tack. Well, if you have come to fight, we are ready. 
I'm not here to fight with beardless children. I've come to your nursery to play. Is there any man here who is brave enough to trade blows with me with this? And he hoists his axe high. Somewhere on a side table, an aristocratic brunette sighs and faints. I will give this axe to any man who is brave enough to take it from me. And I will kneel down and allow him one strike at my neck with it. But in return, he must come and seek me out in a year and a day. So, quickly then, who's my man? Eh? 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 What? Is this really Arthur's court? Arthur's fury rises. He leaps from his place. This is an idiot's game, but if you want to play, let's play. Give me your axe. But one man is about to interrupt. A young knight, fresh-faced, golden-haired. He has seen some challenges, but he has yet to be tested in the way that he truly desires. Ladies and gentlemen, our hero, Gawain, nephew of the king. He has been sitting with Guinevere, sharing a love chat, because this is what Gawain is most famous for, his purity and cleanness of soul, but also the charm and honour of his conversation. Now he leans forward to speak to Arthur. Sire, Allow me to take this challenge in your place. I am the lowest of your knights, and if this creature kills me, I shall not be missed. I beg you, grant me permission to rise from the side of your queen here without dishonour to her grace and beauty. Arthur nods. Gawain steps up and takes. The creature squats, pulling the hair away from his neck. <clears throat> Gawain is not as big as the Green Knight, but he is still strong. He hoists the axe high and lets it fall. Ugh! The axe slices through the green flesh, shearing the bone. The head rolls to the floor of Arthur's court and to the feet of the lovely knights and ladies who kick it away with the toes of their silken shoes and leather boots. Blood pools in the rushes on the floor. How many times have these young people seen a man cut down like this? or an equally brutal fashion, and not get up again. But the Green Knight rises. With his powerful muscles, he propels himself up and lifts his head high. Be ready, Gawain to seek me out in a year and a day. Ask for the knight of the green chapel and you will find me or be forever known as the coward of Camelot. And then he turns his horse and gallops from the hall, the hooves striking sparks from the floor. <laughs>